Hello and welcome to this CBT Nuggets Micro Nugget entitled Mastering Your Eye Device, Understanding iMessage. My name is Tim Warner. iMessage is Apple's versioning of carrier-based text messaging. One point of confusion that many people have is they don't understand the difference because we use the same app to do both text messaging through our carrier, Verizon, AT&T, Rogers, whoever, as well as Apple iMessages. Apple iMessages look and behave like multimedia service MMS messages, but they're carried over Apple's network rather than your carrier's. What's cool about iMessage is that you don't incur any cost. Your carrier is likely charging you for traditional short message service SMS and multimedia message service MMS text messages. Now let's get to the bottom of the situation, friends. From our iDevice, we're assuming a carrier-based iDevice, an iPhone iPhone or an iPad that has a carrier subscription. Let's open up settings and come down to messages. First of all, you can globally enable or disable iMessage if you don't want to be bothered with the technology, if you just want to use carrier-based text messages, or if you don't want to do instant messages at all, you find the whole thing annoying, that's perfectly okay. We also in here can send read receipts to allow others to see whether or not you've read messages that they've sent to you. Send as SMS is important. This, when selected, when turned on, as mine is, will fall back to carrier-based SMS messages when iMessage is unavailable. Remember, iMessage relies upon Apple servers, and their uptime is okay. It's decent, but it's not anywhere near 100% uptime. Of course, you do have to incur carrier messaging rates when you do a fallback to SMS. I'm going to answer the question in just a moment. How can you tell whether a given message is, in fact, iMessage or carrier-based SMS? I'm going to skip over send and receive. That's actually the most important piece here for keeping your iMessages straight. You have some SMS specific options down at the bottom. The difference between SMS and MMS is MMS allows you to attach pictures and other media. So I would assume if you're using an iDevice, you're going to want to use MMS with or without iMessage. And then whether you're allowing or disabling group messaging, showing a subject in addition to your contents of your text messages and character count, which can be important for some carriers who charge by the character in addition to or instead of per message. Now, as I said, send and receive is most important because iMessage is attached to your Apple ID and you can have only one Apple ID active per iDevice. And at that, you see, I have my Apple ID linked here and then you specify which addresses you can be reached through the iMessage network. Now on an iPhone, you'll notice that I have one of my email addresses as well as my iPhone telephone number listening for iMessages. Does it matter? Well, when we think that iMessage is simply an internet-based technology, it doesn't matter too much which address or addresses you're listening to. I would suggest that you at the very least attach your iPhone mobile number so that if somebody else with an iPhone is trying to reach you, an iMessage network is unavailable, they can fall back to sending an SMS or MMS text message to your number. Now something else that bears clarification here along that those lines. Only iDevice users can use iMessage. You're not going to be able to send Apple iMessages to someone with an Android or a Windows Phone 8 phone. This is only for users of carrier-based, or Wi-Fi for that matter, iDevices. iMessage is cool, like I said, like I just said, because you can do it over Wi-Fi in the absence of a carrier network. Now, this listener address feature also becomes relevant when you're sharing an Apple ID. An entire family, for instance, might share a single ID for security purposes. My wife and I, for instance, share an Apple ID. It's just convenient that way. How do I make sure I don't see her iMessages and vice versa? The way we handle that is that we each 
have populated or associated our various email accounts as well as our cell phone numbers with this single Apple ID. You can manage which addresses and numbers are associated with your Apple ID through the web interface, Apple's web interface. I'll put up a link on the screen so you could go there. But basically on my system, I'm listening for messages and my cell number and my email address. And on my wife's iPhone, she has her iMessage configured to listen to her mobile address and her email address. You see, that allows us to share a single Apple ID, but still have our own separate and distinct iMessage streams. Finally, you can start new conversations with just one of those identities. On an iPhone, I'd recommend that you choose the carrier number for maximum flexibility. Now that you understand the bottom line, let's hit our home button and fire up the Messages app itself. The way you can tell whether a message is using SMS or iMessage is the color of the text bubbles. Now, I've always considered these text bubbles to be pink, but I think they're actually white. I'm very colorblind. Another giveaway, whether you're using iMessage or SMS, is the color of your send button. The send button is blue. I can certainly see that, even that with, with my colorblind eyes, here in this composition bar. So I'm going to send what I know is an iMessage to my wife Susan, and our friend Jess is also in this group message conversation. Now when you go to address a new message, and you type a contact's name, as you see, my friend Jess has two numbers, or I have two numbers for her in my contacts list. Any addresses that have been associated by that user with iMessage show up here with a little blue. So make sure if your preference is to use iMessage that when you're addressing a text to somebody that you choose one of their addresses that has the blue bubble next to it to ensure that you're using iMessage as opposed to carrier. Now let me select Jessica's other entry and you'll notice a color change, right? You see that her name doesn't show up as blue or pink or whatever it was before, but instead is, I guess, green. And you see down below when you compose your message, the send button button is also an alternate color. So this is a dead giveaway that we're sending text, carrier-based text, as opposed to iMessage. So there you have it, friends, a little bit on how iMessage works and how to configure it on your iDevice, as well as how to tell at a glance whether you're communicating with somebody using Apple's iMessage network or your carrier's SMS slash MMS network. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.